Hi everyone, welcome back to Mark One Design EMC channel. Um, in our previous episodes, we've done uh, one episode where we introduced the concept of a coaxial cable and uh, its screen effectiveness. And today we're going to dive deep into this subject. Okay, um, let me guess. If you are an RF engineer or EMC engineer, you buy a coaxial cable. You type in on Google 50 ohm coaxial cable. BNC connector or slash N type connector or SMA connector, and then you check the data sheet. Uh, is it working uh, all the way up to 2 gigahertz or 18 gigahertz or 40 gigahertz? And then you look at some of the trusted brands and you just order, right? Um, so in today's episode, we're gonna uh, use a very unique test method to test all these, um, you know, coaxial cable. These are all really good quality coaxial cable where you buy from, um, you know, trusted distributor. But uh, in reality, when you use these, right, um, you're gonna be careful about how you connect them and the uh, make sure that you don't kink the cable and and sometimes even a trusted brand could have one fault um, product right uh, that could lead to problems and the unique test method we're going to use today is to use a ESD gun so in order to measure the or compare the performance of a coaxial cable in terms of shooting effectiveness we have this uh, set up okay so this um, demonstration. I get the idea from Doc Smith, who is the uh, EMC ESD expert and also uh, teaches a lot uh, in terms of high speed measurement and ESD detection. Um, I got this uh, set up from his training course. So if you're interested, uh, get into contact with Doc and attend his seminar. And um, uh, let's just have a quick. Um, uh, walkthrough of the test setup, right? So the purpose is to test the e shielding effectiveness of a coaxial cable. So in this setup, we have a 1.5 gigahertz bandwidth oscilloscope, and channel one is terminated with 50 ohm of the oscilloscope input impedance. This is a 50 ohm coaxial cable, and also terminated with a 50 ohm resistor. So everything's 50 ohm. This is a perfect, well, close to perfect transmission line, and you. You know that in theory, when you have a matched transmission line, then and also the shielding is quite okay, then whatever you generate uh, outside of the shielded cable should not get into the inside of the shielded cable. So in other words, let's say if we don't, uh, if we just run the oscilloscope and uh, you know there's nothing happens, then we should just see a flat line because there's no input to this uh, uh, transmission line. Um, and then you can see we have a uh, RF current probe. Again, this bandwidth is about 800 megahertz, and uh, we are connected to channel three of the oscilloscope. And this current probe is to measure the uh, RF current on the X on the outside of the shielded cable of this coaxial cable. So um, if I just uh, um, run this. Um, um, uh, oscilloscope, you can see everything is flat because right now there is no external noise on the um, coaxial cable on the outside of the coaxial cable. So therefore, um, no noise on the outside when we measure using an RF current probe, and uh, no noise inside, of course, because it's a shielded uh, cable. Now introducing uh, our noise source. Okay, so we have a ESD gum. And uh, if you look at it, the, so the ESD gun, um, the earthing point in this case is actually earth to the same earth point of the uh, oscilloscope. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna zap the outer shield of this coaxial cable. Of course, we expect to see current being picked up by this um, uh, RF current probe, but uh, as we explained, in theory, we shouldn't see anything. Uh, with channel one because this is a shielded cable. So the question is, is that going to be the case? So let's have a look. So we're going to trigger it and let's zap it using a small uh, voltage here, right? We're not going crazy, okay? So you can see we have um, the results. Um, so channel three shows a current and channel one we see a voltage induced. Okay, so we're gonna zap two more times just to make sure that the result is consistent. Okay, so let's see. That's the second, pretty consistent. 
yeah, and very consistent. So what does this tell us then? So let's uh, zoom in to the um, scope. Okay. So this is the result. Okay. So you can see that, as we said, channel 3 is the current, and we measure the current. Okay. So you can see we have 2.1 amps peak current, and you can see this current waveform represents a discharging event of a ESD event. And then you can see the yellow trace, which is channel 1, actually register a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of 909 millivolts, close to 1 volt peak-to-peak. -peak. Okay, that's actually a big voltage. So think about it. If you're using this uh, RG58 coaxial cable, uh, this is the RG58 coaxial cable, and uh, you are measuring some RF stuff, and then all of a sudden there's a small ESD event uh, happened in the environment, then your measurement will register a one volt, close to one volt peak voltage. The question you're gonna ask yourself is, is this gonna be okay for your measurement system when you are using the RG58 coaxial cable? Right, and also I just wanted to mention highlight. Right, if you look at the voltage waveform, you can see also there is a uh, quite sharp uh, waveform here as well, and this sharp waveform actually is synchronized with the sharp rising of the current waveform. You can see that the voltage is pretty much as a representative of a resistive um, character. Okay. And uh, anyway, so uh, this is our first coaxial cable on the test, which is a RG58 BNC connector. Um, but let's uh, let's uh, pick up another one. Okay, so this is our second coaxial cable on the test. This is RG316. Um, quite different, right? In terms of RF performance, this is often goes above one gigahertz. So quite suitable for high frequency measurements. And we're gonna do exactly the same test, okay? So I'm going to connect this to the ch channel 1, and we're going to zap it uh, as um, uh, similar to the previous case. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, performance. Remember, in the RG50A case, we induce about 900 millivolts. Okay, so let's see. Right, okay, so this definitely is different, right? So this is our first zap. Again, we're going to zap two more just to make sure that it's uh, consistent. That's the second, pretty much the same. Yeah, okay. This generate a second uh, spike, so let's make sure that... Uh, okay, right. So we have um, this new results. Let's uh, again zoom in. And have a look. So you can see that with this coaxial cable, we only generate about 400 millivolts. So that's half of the voltage induced compared with the previous case. And uh, the, the the current is pretty much the same, 2.4 amps. Whereas you know you see the the, the the voltage induced in the in channel one is significantly reduced. You also don't see the uh, sort of resistive behavior where you, you have a spike voltage. So um, so this coaxial cable on the test clearly is better than the previous um, RG58 cable. So the question I'm going to ask ourselves is, can we do any better? Can we do any better? So let's have a look. Okay, so this is a specially made coaxial cable. In fact, I believe this has a double shield. So you can see there's an outer shield, and then inside there's a coaxial cable. So in, in effect, this is a double shielded coaxial cable. Right, let's have a look at this uh, cable. Make sure that setup is as close as possible to the previous case. So I'm going to zap it here. Okay, otherwise there is a subtle difference. Okay, the second... Third, okay, let's have a look, um, let's zoom in, right, so this is the result uh, of this um, double shielded cable. As you can see now, uh, with, again, similar current, 2.4 amps, 
um, we read just about 275 millivolts. So again, improved from previous case. So it's, we, we started with 800 or 900 millivolts and 400 millivolts. Now we're going, we're going down to, to 200 something millivolts. So you can see that different uh, coaxial cable definitely have different um, shielding effect in this. So hopefully this is a uh, interesting demonstration and then show you that um, different coaxial cables in terms of material, how they construct, will have um, different shielding effectiveness. Thanks for watching.